Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Very special welcome to those non-Zoomers who are with us meeting in the church building this morning. And although I can't see you, it's good to know you're there. Life poses many big questions about ourselves, and finding answers is not always easy. We've all been guilty of overlooking those we love. There are so many other things trying to grab our attention, and we can so easily overlook the necessity to foster our relationships with family, friends, and loved ones, but especially with God. Today, I want to tell you about a wife stealer and a murderer. <laughs> I might even tell you about my, how my dreams nearly came true the other day when I fell into the arms of this lovely woman. If you have your Bible with you, let's read from Psalm 32. This is a psalm of King David, and it is entitled, Blessed are the Forgiven. The word blessed means happy and at peace. So Psalm 32, reading from verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer, Selah. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today, and we thank you for your word. And we just ask that uh, through God the Holy Spirit, you will minister to each of our hearts, bowed before you this morning, and that God the Holy Spirit will instruct us from your word and speak to us, Heavenly Father. Give us ears that will be open uh, to hear what your word has to say to us. In Jesus' name we ask this, giving you thanks. Amen. Well, the message today is entitled, What Then? Here's a little experiment I want you all to do right now. Try speaking without exhaling or breathing out. Think about how you speak using your breath. The Bible is God's breathed out word speaking to us, but we are not good listeners. At least I am not at some times. We always need God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to help us to hear and to understand what God is saying to us. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all three in perfect unity and harmony, wanting to help us. There are two deadly pandemic diseases in the world just now. There's no known cure for one of them, but there's a radical and complete cure for the other one. COVID-19, nearly trembled when we mentioned that, COVID-19, the coronavirus, is affecting millions of people to date. Uh, over 600,000 people have died, 46,000 of them here in this country. You may know someone who has been affected by this awful disease. It is a fact that whole families have died from it. Think of that for a moment. Are you afraid of catching it? There is no known cure against this virus, 
but billions of pounds and an innumerable number of scientists in this country and around the world are doing their utmost and fully committed to try to find a cure. The second deadly disease is described in the Bible as sin. That's what God calls it. You have it, everybody has it. But the good news is that there is a definite and complete remedy for sin. I like to think that if you became infected with COVID-19 and there was a cure, you would want to have that cure. No one knows for sure where the coronavirus came from, but the Bible is very clear about where sin has come from, how it started, and how you have been infected by it. It started in the Garden of Eden. God in his Bible has kept a permanent record for us and we read about it in the opening chapters of the Bible. God created the first man, Adam. And from Adam, he created the first woman. And you know, I think she must have been a most beautiful woman because she was a perfect woman. And I'll say no more at that point. They were in the beautiful Garden of Eden, nothing to do with the Eden here we have in Cornwall. And God gave them everything they could ever possibly need. But he commanded them not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was in the middle of the garden. He warned Adam that if they ate of it, they would die. It was the tree of death. I grew up in a rural area, and I can remember as children walking along the road with my parents and seeing these lovely red berries in the hedgerow. They looked very desirable, and I wanted to eat some of them, but my parents sternly warned me not to because they were poisonous and could kill me. Well, sadly, Eve was deceived by the devil and ate of the tree and gave some to her husband, Adam. They disobeyed God's command and consequently were sent out of the garden, away from the presence of God, and eventually died, but not before they'd had sons and daughters. How many times have you been deceived? Or maybe you can remember deceiving someone yourself. Your genealogy stretches right back to Adam and Eve, who have passed on to every living person the sin disease. You have it, I have it, everybody has it. The Bible tells us that all have done wrong things and missed the target which God has set for us. We therefore, like Adam and Eve, are under the sentence of death, not only physical death, but spiritual death as well. As Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden and away from God, so the things that you have done wrong have separated you from God. The fear of coronavirus and high death rate it is causing has impacted a great number of people in that they are now thinking about what happens after death? Is death the end? What then? The Bible clearly states that it is appointed unto man once to die, that includes women as well, and after that the judgment. One day you will have to stand before God and give an account of your life. The one big question that God will put to you is, what have you done with my son Jesus? Dying from the coronavirus is an awful death. Death from sin is much worse. Reality check. One day, you will die. We all will. The question is, what then? Jesus said, I do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. I take comfort from the word that we read from Psalm 32, verse 7. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You see, Christians are hidden in Christ Jesus, where they will never come under the anger and judgment of Almighty God. Hiding in Jesus is a very safe place to be. And verse 10 goes on to tell me, Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Jesus also declared, 
I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die, meaning you will, they will live forever with him in heaven. The Bible states very clearly, and I and millions of others believe it, that if we have done, and we have done, things that are wrong or even thought are wrong in God's eyes, some people think they're good, good enough for heaven. They believe they've never done anything wrong. They've never told a white lie. How about you? Can you think of anything that you've ever done wrong? It is written in the Bible that if we say we have not sinned, done wrong things, we make God out to be a liar. Imagine calling God, the creator of heaven and earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that's out there. Imagine calling God a liar. Remember, when you were a child, and you used to do things that mom and dad told you not to do, you thought they would never find out. But somehow or other, they always find out. God sees everything you do and say and think, and he says, Behold, your sins will find you out. The amazing truth is that whatever we have done wrong against God, he still goes on loving us. And as long as we are alive on this earth, he gives us a chance to recover. God has provided a remedy for your sin disease, but at great cost to himself. The greatness of his love for you was demonstrated by God when he sacrificed his only beloved son, Jesus Christ, to tie a terrible death, a horrific death, on a cross just over 2,000 years ago. Have you ever cried over something? Maybe someone upset you and made you angry. Maybe someone you trusted cheated on you. Maybe you looked back on the bereavement of a loved one and cried. I shed a few te tears last week as I remembered my youngest daughter's birthday. She died about 18 months ago. A few weeks ago, I listened to a girl singing that lovely song, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross on YouTube. While she was singing, a video clip portrayed some of the suffering of Jesus as he was chained to a wooden post, stripped naked, and uh, severely beaten with scourging whips by two mighty strong Roman soldiers. It was agonizing to watch as his body was cut to ribbons and covered in his blood. Then onto the cross, where he was roughly placed, and large nails were hammered into his hands and feet, and a Roman soldier stuck a spear into his side, into his very heart, and his lifeblood poured out. Yes, Jesus cried. But before he breathed his final breath, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. As I watched, I felt that I had had a hand in hammering those nails into his hands and feet and thrusting the spear into his heart. And I'm not ashamed to admit it, that I cried too, as I thought of the suffering and the sacrifice that Jesus made for me on that cross. And you, my friend, had a hand in it too. He took your wrongdoings upon himself on that cross and paid the price which God demanded, the precious life, the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. God counts Jesus' as death as payment for every wrong you have ever done. Listen to that again. God counts Jesus' Jesus's death as payment for every wrong you have ever done. Jesus died, was buried, and God raised him up again on the third day, and he is alive forevermore. Trust and faith in what Jesus did on that cross for you, my friend, is God's remedy for your sin. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin, past, present, and future sins. God is calling you today to seek forgiveness and pardon and the free gift of eternal life, not tomorrow or next year, but today. 
Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you. Now, you're listening to what Jesus is saying. He says, I say unto you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. I know this to be true. I believed and trusted in Jesus many years ago, and he has given me the free gift of eternal life, a life filled with love and joy and happiness. The Bible says, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We read in Psalm 32 these words. Blessed is the one, remember what I said about that? Blessed means happy and at peace. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my son. This was a prayer to God of a man who had committed adultery with another man's wife, making her pregnant. And then to try and cover up his evil deed, he had the woman's husband murdered. But God found him out, and with a very sorrowful heart, he sought God's pardon and forgiveness, and God delivered him from judgment and condemnation. The Bible clearly states, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only remedy for your sin, your wrongdoings. The Bible clearly states, there is no other name under heaven given amongst men by which we must be saved. When you die, your soul, the real you, will go to one of two places for all eternity, heaven or hell. In love, God has come down to where you are. It is now up to you to decide. Joshua, the man who took over from Moses, declared, Choose you this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What next, my friend? Like all of us, time will run out for you one day. Maybe today or tomorrow, but we're never promised a tomorrow. What then? It's make your mind up time. Jesus is patiently and lovingly waiting to give you rest. He says, come unto me and I will give you rest. Don't delay. My mum always said to us as children, don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. With God helping you today, come to Jesus. Don't delay. Don't let anything hold you back. I urge you to come to Jesus and trust him for pardon for, and forgiveness today. Right where you are, God the Holy Spirit will help you. A few days ago, I was walking up to town. I noticed a woman, a woman coming in my direction. She had a walking aid, but the wheels seemed to get stuck in some of the cobbles. I went over to help her, and just as I got beside her, she started falling right into my arms. <laughs> I was able to save her from injury. Jesus is waiting for you, my friend, to fall into his outstretched arms. He wants to embrace you in God's amazing love to forgive, pardon, and cleanse you from all that's wrong in your life and to bring you into a loving relationship with God, your Heavenly Father. It means you turning away from your old way of life and committing yourself to Jesus, who alone can give you a new life, His life, everlasting life, which He gave for you on the cross. I quote from David again in Psalm 34, which says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. May you seek the Lord today, and may you be delivered by the Lord. What then? <laughs> well, you trust the Lord, become a Christian, you will need further help and support to grow as a Christian. And you may contact our pastor, Tim Bodman, who will be pleased to help you. God bless you, and thank you for listening. I'm just going to close with a prayer, and I'm taking it from God's word. This is what God says. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Saviour, 
through Christ Jesus our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen.